So at 14 years old, I decided to make a life-altering change to my body. Yep, that's right, I went vegan. <laughs> but you know, my family is pretty sweet. My grandmother, she would call and she would say, wow, you sound really sick. Are you under the weather? Uh, no, no, grandmother, I'm a transsexual. We've discussed this before. <laughs> So I go on walks late at night so that I can practice my speeches. One of the best things about it is that uh, when you're walking up the hills, which there are always hills in San Francisco, your heart starts to beat faster and you start to lose your breath. And I think that that helps emulate when you're giving speeches in stressful environments. I have usually two minutes for each of the interviews. So I'm gonna see how much I can get done in two minutes. Hi, my name is Mia Satya and I'm running for San Francisco Board of Education. I saw firsthand the many challenges that our students face in a city with the fastest growing wealth divide in the country and in a city with the biggest opportunity gap for our African-American students. I'm not trying to run as the trans candidate, and I'm running for all of our kids so that all of our kids can have an equal shot at success. We're going to together work to increase wages for our teachers. Yeah. And we're also going to support our homeless youth. There's over 2,000 homeless youth in SFUSD, and that's not acceptable. I had just escaped homelessness myself. I was living in a transitional housing program and I met so many amazing young people that have really inspired me to continue doing this work. Mia was very important to me because she taught me what, it, what oppression meant and not only what it meant, but how to fight against it. A lot of people think that in San Francisco, queer youth are like have all the rights in the world and are super protected and all of that, but that's not true. And like as a feminine person, like there's so much toxic masculinity that having someone like Mia just be there for me and not only learn from her, but also knowing that someone had my back. Okay, cool, sickening. I grew up in a very small town where there were more cows than people. I didn't really have role models who were trans or gender non-conforming. There were a lot of days where I seriously considered suicide because I didn't know how I was gonna make it through the week, much less make it to graduation. After high school, I became transient, homeless, and I made my way to San Francisco to find community. San Francisco has a reputation as a progressive city. People think that they can, you know, come here and, and, and be safe. But in our middle schools, on our streets, uh, Mia Saj is living proof that there is tremendous hostility that you never know when you're going to face. I was punched, I was kicked. I think what was the most terrifying thing about that was that there were so many people around who weren't doing anything. It was unfortunate that it really took a very traumatic situation to really feel tangibly uh, that the community in San Francisco is strong and we will continue to fight for our values and to be a beacon of hope for the rest of the country. So we are in Clarion Alley. These are all political murals. Sometimes um, they celebrate community leaders who are with us or who are no longer with us. This mural is uh, honoring trans women activists. This is my portion of the mural here. You can see that someone said no to me, but I hope that you will say yes this November. Really, it's sad to me that it's 2018 and we've never had a trans person elected here. 
It's the same with every issue. Those who are most impacted by the problem are also closest to the solution. And we need to not only invite them to the table, but give them power in creating the policies and programs that will help reverse that.